All right, everybody's streaming into the Zoom. That's very exciting. Welcome, welcome. We've got a full house tonight, whatever that means in the virtual event space, but we're just gonna wait for everyone to filter in before we get started. Um, all right, uh, if you, as you're coming in, if you feel like saying hi in the chat and letting us know where you're tuning in from, it's really fun to see um, the spread of the crowd we draw for these since um, you can attend from anywhere in the world. So it'd be great to know, wow, cool. We got some West Coasters, Midwesterners, people from the Southwest, New Orleans, Maryland. Very cool. Excellent. Wow, really from all over. That's so cool. All right, we're just going to wait a few more minutes, um, another minute or so, and then we'll get started. Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. And yeah, do let us know where you're tuning in from. Alrighty, good crowd. Boston suburbs, that's where I'm from too. All right. Um, I'm just going to get started and people will continue to filter into the Zoom. Um, we have a big event tonight, so we want to get out of the way as quickly as possible. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's live online author event with Greenlight Bookstore. I'm Jean from Greenlight, and we're thrilled to host tonight's event with Gina Schock, launching her new book, Made in Hollywood, All Access with the Go-Go's. She'll be talking with Kate Pearson of the B-52, so you're in for an excellent time. Before we start, I just want to say a huge thanks to Gina, Kate, and the team at Black Dog and Leventhal for making this happen, and to all of you for showing up tonight. Although we're not able to host events in our store spaces, our community of authors and readers is always here, and we're so grateful for your support and the chance to make space for conversation and connection around books. Uh, before we get started, there's just a few housekeeping things to keep in mind. In our Zoom webinar tonight, you can see and hear the speakers, but they can't see or hear you. They can see that you're here, though, and there are a couple of different ways you can interact with the authors and with each other throughout tonight's event, one of which you've already made use of if you told us where you're tuning in from, which is the chat. Uh, that's the icon that looks like one speech balloon at the bottom of your screen. You're welcome to post your comments and your thoughts, your reactions, which is a great way to show your appreciation for the author and to interact with your fellow attendees. If you have a specific question you'd like to have answered by the author or the interviewer tonight, please post that question in the Q&A module. You can find it by clicking on the icon that looks like two speech balloons. We'll be pulling questions at the end of the evening only from the Q&A module to be answered in the later part of the evening. And most importantly, Tonight's featured book, Made in Hollywood, is available for sale from Greenlight Bookstore. You can shop in person from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at both our Fulton Street and Flatbush Ave stores, where you can purchase Gina's book and so many others on site. You can also order online at greenlightbookstore.com for a quick pickup at the store or for shipping anywhere in the U.S. I'll drop the buy link in the chat periodically over the course of the evening. If you care about supporting the careers of authors and the ongoing existence of independent bookstores, buying tonight's featured book is a great way to show your support. And now uh, our interviewer tonight is Kate Pearson, a musician and one of the founding members of the B-52s, legendary, in which she plays guitar, bass, various keyboard instruments and vocals. In 2015, Pearson released her first solo album, Guitars and Microphones. She'll be speaking tonight with our featured author, Gina Schock. Gina is a working musician and a songwriter known for being part of the all-female band, The Go-Go's, for four decades. 
She has done everything from producing the Go-Go's DVD release of their 2001 concert, Live in Central Park, to co-writing the title track for the Miley Cyrus album, Breakout, in addition to several songs on Selena Gomez and the scene's debut album, Kiss and Tell. Shock's songs have also appeared in many movies, including The Accused, Superstar, and Bull Durham, to name a few. She has also acted for television and independent films. Made in Hollywood is Gina's first book, and it's her personal account of the band, which includes a treasure trove of photographs and memorabilia collected over the course of her 40-year career. So Gina is going to start us off with a reading or presentation from the book, and then she'll be talking with Kate, and lastly with all of you. So without further ado, please take it away, Gina. Gina, I think you're on mute. You want to unmute before you. Great. Ah, uh, how's that? Great. Better. OK, I, was, I, I just want to say that I I'm in such a grateful mode in my life. I mean, you know, I've been able to do what I love my entire adult life. And um, to have to have that all chronicled through photographs that I took and have it in a book all in one place has on only been a dream. Um, the girls in the band always wanted me to do something like this, but it, it felt so overwhelming, you know? Um, and so I just, I couldn't be happier or prouder of, of, of how it's come out. It was a long journey. It was a year and a half going through all these photos. You just get lost. It was, uh, you know, we were, I mean, I would, I would bring the photos out for the girls to look at and we would get hysterical and laugh about all the things we've been through. You know, you, you look at a photograph, it all comes back. And, and what I initially had started out as a, as a uh, Dogo's uh, photo coffee table book, I um, started writing, you know, my publisher came to me and said, you know what, what do you, how do you feel about writing about these photos? I was like, I don't know, I'm not a writer. But then the more I looked at them, the more it started to creep out. There's so many stories about every one of these shots, you know, what was happening at that moment, what was happening during that particular time, that day, that month, that year, so much to draw from all over the place. Um, and so, you know, I don't know about reading something from this book and how it's going to, uh, you know, I, there were so many people that we met over the years. Um, and, uh, let's see this. This is kind of a sweet thing that we got from a young comedian who was just starting out and we were playing Saturday night live and it came in, it was a telegram and it said, I love you. Good luck. And I'll be watching tonight to see, hope to see you soon. Pee Wee Herman. Um, there are things like this and, and much more um, that I saved because they all mean something to me. They were all important in making this group what it became. Um, I don't discount any of this stuff. I saved it all. I'm, I'm, look, I'm not a hoarder, but I did save it all. Um, <laughs> because I'm a sentimentalist and it, it, it all touched me, you know? Um, uh, this is what the book is about. Um, as far, and once again, as far as reading something out of the book, what, what would you like me to do? Read like a, uh, a couple of paragraphs or something? Sure, if there's a section that you feel like encapsulates the spirit of the book or you have a favorite couple of pages um that would be great mm -hmm. whatever you want well you know what my book mainly focuses on the beginning of the group the first five six years because that is when that was the best part you know how they always say the struggle is the best part well this was this was the best part um <laughs> oh my god I get stuck on these photos sorry you guys I just uh like here's something Belinda wrote okay and she sent in this essay she says it, the, the title was Barbie is a friend of mine none of us had any money I went from job to job in the early days I would cash my checks and put all my money in a Barbie thermos it seemed like a smart place to keep keep it disgraceland that's where she lived 
uh, that's the apartment building that it was that was that was deemed Graceland, uh, Disgraceland, uh, was the name of the house where I lived, and I would never leave my money there. It was kind of a flop house, and it was known for being one of the dirtiest places to live in in Hollywood. There was always a lot going on, people in and out all the time. A couple could be having sex in one of the bedrooms while there was a fist fight happening in the living room. Our friends were really interesting, to say the least. When night came, we would venture out into the streets to find the best party, wherever that may have been. There, were always, there was always something happening in Chinatown. It was, a special, it was special because all the clubs were in the same square, one big hangout. We traveled as a group. And over the course of the evening, you could find us at Hong Kong Garden, uh, Madame Wang's, or Cafe de Grand. We played at all three clubs regularly, and there were usually three different shows going on at the same time, which is true. It was. Um, I mean, you could walk over to any venue, and your and your buddies would be playing there, and you walk across the street, and your other friends are playing there. Um, uh, let me see where I left off. Um, while we were while we, we played all of these cl clubs regularly um while we were performing i never left the barbie thermos in the dressing room i would bring it on stage with me and put it in gina's kick drum nobody could get it without me seeing it uh i i wouldn't let it out of my sight because all the money i had in the world was in there and it was usually around a hundred dollars after we finished our shows we would hang out in the plaza and then walk over to this bar that was like a throwback from Chinatown in the 1930s. It was ornately decorated and we marveled at how cool it was. So gorgeous. Everyone's favorite drinks were Singapore slings and kamikazes. Mm -hmm. We talk about the crazy things that happened when we were playing that night. There's a show I won't forget that was at the Cafe de Grand. I thought we had only one set and somehow Someone offered me a quaalude. Of course, I took it, not realizing we had two shows to do that night. Before long, it hit me, and I was immediately fucked up. I had to get together enough to make it to the stage where I sat in a chair, slumped over, slurring every word. That wasn't one of my finer moments. I made it through that second set, and no one complained. Our audience loved it, and they cheered me on as I barely kept my eyes open. Back when we weren't trying to be, or back when we weren't trying to be anything, we just were. The essence of the Go-Go's -Go is that there really is no pretense. For us, it was just party. For us, it was just a party. Uh, we were out there to have a good time. If you don't time your drugs the right way, you just deal with it. At the end of the night, everyone went home with whomever. I always went home with Barbie. <laughs> uh, so good. Yeah, her, her, her thermos would that she'd stick all her money in. So figured, and then throw it in my kick drum because nobody could get to it without us seeing it. It's right on stage. So it was a smart move, no matter how screwed up you were. <laughs> that is such a good story. Um, That's a good one. I used to bring my purse on stage. I always had this big blue purse, like this giant blue vinyl. It had glitter in it. And I yeah. would bring that on stage and set it on my keyboard. You know, we all had our ways of uh, protecting our, and I've had money stolen. I've had my purse sure. stolen. We had who all has? our purse stolen once, you know, who hasn't been ripped off, but yes, gotta, yes. Gotta, I just love that bringing the stuff on stage with you and hiding it because that's the only place it's safe. It is, no matter who you left it with, uh, you know, yeah. and, and the truth was there was always so much going on. So if you left it with uh, your tour manager or something, it, it wasn't the safest place, not unless they had, not unless they had like a place where they could lock it away. Well, one of our yeah. first gigs, uh, Steve Robowski was our tour manager and he was, we didn't realize this was his first gig, sort of first job, maybe, I don't know. He, he had, he was driving us from the airport and everyone was beeping, beeping. And we didn't realize he had just gotten his driver's license. And he really was just driving like a, a maniac. And he had a briefcase with the money that we got for the gig. And the office had a, the wall didn't go all the way to the ceiling and someone crawled in and stole all the money. So 
Even oh. with the tour manager, it's not safe. In those days, do you remember everything was cash? Like after a gig, there'd be just stacks of, well, hopefully there would be some cash from the gig. But, you know, when times were good, there were just stacks of cash. Well, yeah. How much did the band see of that, I wonder? Then, well, because nobody could really keep a count. The IRS couldn't really do a good count. And certainly the bands, we didn't really, you know, no. we weren't sure what was going on. We were told what the numbers were, but. Right. You know, the accounting system really sucked and we just had to sort of go along with it and hopefully make friends with the promoters and the, or the club owners right. um, so that they, they do the right thing when we played again. But of course, you know, Kate, if you remember when we when we would do well at, at, at the various clubs, uh, we, got, we, we started to get really treated well, you know. Yeah, it didn't yeah. take long before people were treating us the right way. But first couple of times around, it was kind of hard, you know. But it was um, a fun time when you didn't even care about making the money. I mean, the first nah, time you did, you, just, you, you got just like have fun. <laughs> You wanted to have fun with your friends. That's why you were there. That's why you were doing yeah. it. It was like, a, I don't know. It's like, how lucky were we? We get to do like oh. what we love to do. We're having fun and we get to make yeah. some money. Well, maybe we're not making the most money in the world, but we were doing all right. Yeah, as long as we you could know, just get pay for a hotel and meals. Yeah, and, you know, we, instruments we, we get and, to quit. We get to quit our regular job, right? Yeah, <laughs> that was the best part. The I best. Yeah, I went to quit. Um, I was a paste up artist on the Athens Banner Herald. The day I went to quit, and I was all geared up. I'm going in there. I'm going to quit because we. They kept wanting me to work on the weekends, and I walked in there, and they said, "Well, we have to tell you that you're fired." Because you put in the obituary wrong. And I was like, yes, now I can get unemployment. So that was just a wonderful, the only job I was ever fired from. And it was just like the perfect timing. Because then, you know, I could get unemployment and we could do our gigs. We all had little jobs. And when we were able to quit those jobs, wasn't it fabulous? <laughs> <laughs> it felt like, you know, you had you have finally made it. You can quit that job. And yeah. now you, every penny you get is going to be, you're going to be earning from uh, playing in a band. Yeah. Wow. What, what was your what first, what was the job you were doing when you, that you were able to quit? My, the last job that I had that I was able to stop was I uh, had moved to LA and was living with this friend of mine, Steve in Beverly Glen. And there was a shop up the street called Odie's Market. And Odie's was, you know, kids and kids were working there. Of course, yeah. I'm like, you know, in my early 20s and I'm working there. Whatever. I had to get a job. And, I, you know, working there was really kind of cool. Um, the guys didn't treat you that well that owned the place. But, you know, I'd sit out front eating my lunch and who would pull up directly in front of me, George Harrison and his wife would pull up. Uh, the runaways would all pull up in a car. Wow! I'm, I'm, you never know who was going to show up because it was. It's in, in LA. There's a, in, on, on Beverly Glen. There's that one market. It's still there in the middle of Beverly Glen, and uh, I, I think it'll probably be there forever. Uh, but uh, lots of folks used to stay there. Like George Harrison lived right up the top of the hill there. Um, it was a lot of artists in in wow. in that uh, canyon, and so you never knew who was going to drop in there. But it was. Uh, a cool place to be working you know because i just run yeah. in the front. hi hi you know? um wow. just working in hollywood is i guess fun i mean this is such a different scene like for us dark punk new york or you know new wave i mean we brought a lot of glitter and glam to the scene but still the yeah. la punk scene it's you know i didn't really I wasn't that familiar with it. And so I was just reading yeah. that. Um, oh, I was listening to the audio book. I think it's called Under the Big Black Sun. Oh, it's that's all about John's Alex. book? And Gina's in it. Yes, John Doe and um, Exene. And they're all, you know, reading yeah, 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 yeah. comments on their memories. Right, right. Like a collective memoir. But I was listening to some of the punk bands, the early LA punk bands. It was so hardcore. They were really like... They were really, they really were really, uh, but, but you know what? It, it, was a, it was a great scene because everybody supported each other. 
you yeah. know it, it really was cool it was like uh and and you know somebody be playing they'd like oh come up on stage and play the last song with us <laughs> and and the audience was up for anything anything you want to do they were fine with you know yeah they really yeah. were they didn't care what you did as long as you were having fun and, and you were interacting with them they were all happy campers well, something I didn't even remember that my friend Robert Waldrop reminded me of and texting this morning that when we played Max's, Max's Kansas City, we followed Teenage Jesus and the Jerks like oh, twice, I think, God. the very like first shows we did. And what a contrast, you know, Teenage Jesus and the Jerks. And then we come on with oh, our Planet Claire. And it's just like, it must have been like, what? What is this? I, and you guys too. Day before I die, please let me sing back up. <laughs> anytime, man, anytime you are always welcome to come on stage. And I know it all. I'm the biggest fan, Kate. I love you guys. You're so good. Well, I love you guys too. And it's like, <laughs> it's like we kind of grew up together. And I know we did grow up know. together. You know what? Really, I swear to God, we got to get our managers to talk about maybe doing some shows next year, don't you think? I know. Those were the fun times when we toured together. That was great. Oh, yeah. It was the best tour ever when we got to tour with you guys in, what was it, 1990, right? And also, I think 2013, we did a big tour. Did we? Yeah. I don't remember, but I'm going to tell you what. I just know that every day getting up and being able to hang around with your friends that you're yeah. totally comfortable with, talking about the night before, uh, you know, getting yeah. excited to want to play as the best you can, showing off for each other. And I, oh, God, that was really, really a great time. It's really magical. I, I mean, because people I, I think that. people think all musicians hang out together, get to see each other, but, you know, you're always gigging. So yeah. it's hard yeah. to. To hang out like a yes, lot of times if you're opening or you're closing the set you know you're getting your makeup done or I've told the story a million times but Chrissy Hine when we played with the pretenders she said I want to go first because when you're finishing your set I'll be in bed so <laughs> you know she probably bed. was telling the truth <laughs> well she put out mega energy anyway so she deserved yeah. it but but it is great to have, you know, friends and we toured with so many different people, but you guys were the most fun, you know, because it was like all the women together. Uh, ditto. I, it's because it wasn't things. I feel like things were just understood, you know? Yeah. And there was no like macho vibe. It was just fun vibe. And I mean, not that, yeah. but yeah, no, no, like, no macho vibe, just yeah. fun, whatever works. We're all cool. We're all very cool with each other because we knew, you know, the 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 journeys that we had both been on being in a in a band uh with girls. They, yeah. they don't, you know, not being taken seriously. So so you liking the book, Kate? I'm loving the book. And you know, I got three copies because we we're trying so hard. You were trying so hard to get me get a copy to me and I was going back and forth between a couple of places and yeah so you go from nothing to everything so it's great I love because I did see it um you know pdf copy of it but seeing it in person here it's just like I can't tear myself away and I love the I love the writing and when you asked me to write an, a, an essay I was like essay what am I gonna you know how is it gonna be They're not so maybe great. like anyone else's but when you tell your own experience you know it can't be like anyone else's so each one each essay is so great and the writing is so good and the picture is just really what I love most is like we did oh here's this great picture of Paul Rubens our friend peewee but um just the candid you know you don't see that much I mean, back in the day, we're like, oh, I don't like that picture of me. But now that we're older and we look at the young pictures, like we look pretty good. <laughs> so I think just yeah, looking back yeah. and seeing this goofy, you know, goofing and making faces and doing all the stuff that you naturally do without thinking like this is going to be seen someday. It's going to be in a book. Just to have that here is so precious. It's like, wow, it's and, and, you know, and at that age, Kate, you can get away with anything. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. you know, when you're that age, you just look cute and goofy. And all the outfits, like I love the 
just the changes that the people go through every band kind of you know you start out you wear yeah. something you know just the changes in the look and in the music you know as you develop and you yes. sort of go the look develops along with the music and maybe you get more slick and then you realize oh we're too slick and you pull back and you get more you know I don't know it's just it's just such a a loop-de-loop -loop journey and it's all here in this book and I just love that it's so candid and unabashed and you know, I'm pretentious. It's just, it's just really, really fun, fun to look at these pictures. And it's kind of like every band can look at this. And I think every person can look at it and think, you know, oh, this is like when I was young or, and it's not about being young, but just starting an adventure, you know, starting out an adventure, whatever age you're at, you know, and you get yeah. those candid pictures when you're all excited and doing something new. It is, and it is all about an adventure, isn't it? Um, yeah. you, you know, whether you start out by yourself or with a friend, um, you're trying to, you're setting out on this journey. You're not quite sure where you end up, but you know you got to do it. There's something <laughs> compelling you. You're, something, you're, something is compelling you deep down inside that you have to make yeah. this jump. You have to take a leap of faith, you know. And um, and and when you're, you know. 21, 22, in, in that, at that point, you feel like anything's possible. Right. And that's what's so great about the youth. You, you really do believe that you can do anything. Yeah. And also, I came from a family, parents that really did make me believe that anything was possible. All I had to do was put my mind to it and work hard. And that they always told me, anything you want is attainable. Just gotta, just gotta put your, put your head to it and work hard, and you'd be surprised where you, where you end up one day, you know. And if you, and if that doesn't work out, well, you use what you, what you've just been working on to not kick you up to another level in whatever direction you want to go, because it all accumulates and it's all worth something. And yeah. that's the way I, I always looked at stuff. I knew that going out, you know, that going out to LA, if it didn't work in LA, I would use that experience to go maybe back to New York or maybe up to San Francisco, wherever it may be. And I'd push and I'd push and I'd push till I found the right people that I really felt a connection with right. um, that I knew would, uh, that I knew that had something. I had to find the right people that had some sort of magic. They had, had to have something happening. And the Go-Go's did, they really did. There were these yeah. great little harmonies uh, in the midst of all this thrashing and pretty crappy playing. Um, but you could decipher it. You could figure it out, you know? Well, there was uh, definitely, I mean, it's almost like the planets have to align. You know, you have to have this, this yeah. ingredients that make the one whole better than any of the parts, really. I mean, everyone, I think, in, in your band is talented, did other things. But when you come together, it's a special kind of thing that nothing can reproduce that. You know, it's just yeah, this magic. We all, we all say that, Kate. That And that is absolutely the same with you guys. I mean, do you yeah. feel that about your band? Yes, yes. Like everyone's yeah, equally talented. and But when we come together, it's like there's nothing. It's just so unique. You know, it's like. A, it is. Isn't that weird? That, that wonderful chemistry that happens that that you couldn't pay for you couldn't yeah you couldn't you couldn't conjure it up it's just there when when you're in the same room with your bandmates and well, when we you used pick to up your instruments next level you know yeah. and we wow. used to say together we're a genius you know? <laughs> <laughs> somehow I somewhere get i get it together also, we're together the band together the go-go's are like a monster head we used it's to say, monster, yeah, with a five-headed five monster. No, it's a monster with ten arms. <laughs> <laughs> the Hydra. <laughs> Hydra. Oh so my God. I'm amazed though that you had you took all the photographs. I mean, how how did you know, or did you have any inkling like you were going to use these photographs? Um, was it just fun, like just for it kicks? It was just fun, Kate. I just I was always in. To photography and even um driving out to cali i had an instamatic that i was snapping away with and uh you know when i got a little money i bought a 35 millimeter can canon camera uh which i then continued to take photos and um 
it, it was it, it was a I was wholeheartedly interested in the in in photography and wanted to you know see if I could sort of come up with anything that would make sense that would stick out in the world of photography that that would be some sort of a statement that that I could you know grab one to go whoa Gina's got a style or you know yeah um, something worthy and I figure you know you start where you're most comfortable that's my my band I started with the band with the go-go's I love this picture of you here thanks I, I like that, that too who I took like that picture too. me I just take it in the I just oh stay. oh right okay right me taking a picture of me in the camera <laughs> I mean in the mirror which is so appropriate because, you know, you, it was through your eyes. Yeah. 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 So. It's been, it's been really great. Kate it really has. Um, uh, have you read it yet? Or you just been skimming through? I've read a lot of it. Um, not all of it though. Cause I just got, got it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just skimming through looking at all the pictures, reading some of the, I had read that uh, Belinda's, essay which I thought was really cool because it did kind of the same thing and uh read Jodie Foster's and of course I read mine <laughs> just to make sure it's okay uh no it's really really amazing um I just think the way it's put together the color the layout is just it's it's really great you've really accomplished something amazing and oh, we're following God. in your footsteps because we're gathering you know I spent this winter gathering all the photographs that really we're doing a book and a documentary too, B-52. So we're just getting it together. We're just getting uh, met with the archivists and Cindy's husband, Keith Bennett has a treasure trove of stuff. And I had a bin of Super 8 film and they're going through that now and pictures and oh. all the slides. Oh. I, don't know why I took slides, but Anyway, we're working on it and I appreciate how much work it is because we're oh, doing it collectively, but you did all of this. And it's every time I talk to you, you were like immersed in doing the book and laying it out and getting it together, which is a huge amount of work. You know, uh, Kate, you just Fun. you just set you just would set your schedule every day at the end of the evening, whatever, how much you got it, then you set your schedule up for the next day. You just get up and you start doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean that's have that you start you get up and start doing it. Yeah. And same thing the next day, next day. That went on for a year and a half. But when you are doing something that is a labor of love, and yeah. it truly really was, and it and it is going to be for you too, uh, you just, you you push harder and farther than you would if it was just strictly right. about like making a lot of money, you know? Right. To me, this is about like showing the band in a light that they've never been seen in because it's, right. It's from me. It's from someone in the band who, you know, somehow became the archivist. And I have all this stuff and you get to see it from my perspective. I, which I feel is like a, a good perspective because I love all this stuff. I, it all has value. And I, I want everyone to see you know, I uh, want all the fans to see the value of everyone in this band and, you know, uh, all the years that have been put into making us what we are now today. Um, and there's been some tough times, been mostly great times, but. Uh, yeah. There's always some tough times, but, but uh, like you said, and it's funny, I read Chris Franz's book, Remain in Love. And he said the same thing, being on the drummer's seat you're on a throne there you you you're saying you are the heartbeat of the band and you see you have the best seat in the house and so you could see the audience you could see the band um and the fact that you sort of documented all of that with your camera it's, it's just somehow really appropriate that the drummer did that because you had this bird's eye view i uh yes i did <laughs> and and you no know, and you know what I always you know even on my um even when when I was driving out in my dad's pickup truck I had an Instamatic camera hanging around my neck so I started back with an Instamatic camera in seventy seven I, I was always into wanting to take photos and I just wanted to document everything around me yeah 
I wanted to be able to one day look back at that and go, oh my God, remember what was happening at that moment? Remember what we were doing? How cool was that? We've lived through that. We're here to talk about it. Like, I don't know. Didn't you do you a guys, lot of uncensored photos? We did a lot of goofy photos that, you know, I don't think anyone in the band would want anyone to see, you know, just goofing around, but doing like- uh, Well, what do you think? You know. you, you've looked at the book. Do you think there's some that are slightly risque or some that are sort of like, oh, just a bunch of girls goofing off? That's what I love about it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think any of it's really risque. It's just, it's just goofing. The goofing off part is what I love because we did all of that too. And it's just- it's, it's just so refreshing to see the unposed, you know, and <laughs> unposed, you know, because everything, you know, you know, someone's pointing the camera, you're like, and what it's know? really like, what, it, what it's really like when you get goddamn <laughs> bored on tour, okay? Exactly. It shows That's that what happens when you get thing. bored. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. You're so, you're bored and you're nothing to do. Someone has a camera and a bunch of ham. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> everyone's always a bunch of hams right everyone's always willing to pose and you know get in there so I know sometimes people are like no but for the most part it seemed like everyone was willing and and the fact that you could isn't do that funny it's funny how how like all your bandmates are willing if somebody else wants to take a picture it's like nah fucking leave me alone I don't know right right but when it's somebody in the band they're like yeah yeah sure whatever you want oh yeah I'll do any <laughs> stupid thing you know any kind of lewd thing with the you know get the you know, you know how it is. <laughs> I know how it is, Kate. I know, I know. Oh my God. Um, I am so, uh, I'm like a wa feel like I'm awash in both of your memories. Um, and I don't want to stop the flow, but I, we, our question and our Q and A is teeming oh. with questions. Awesome. And uh, Kate, I don't know if you want to look through the questions and pick, pick the ones that are interesting to you and you okay. guys can volley them back and forth. Um, well, here's the, here's one for Gina. Will the Go-Go's be rescheduling the U.S. tour for 2022? <laughs> um, yes, of course we will. We're trying to do that right now. We're in the midst of doing it. What, what we have on the books at the moment is um, next June and July, we will be in the U.K., opening for Billy Idol and he's doing stadium tours. So we'll play uh, awesome. uh, Wembley, we'll play uh, Leeds Arena. Um, I don't know, whatever the all football stadiums are, we're gonna do about seven or eight shows over there. Uh, and then uh, booking around that, we wanna, you know, we wanna do shows uh, back here in the States. So yeah, I think we're gonna get some stuff done. And um, we also are working on some projects that we are hoping will come to fruition next year, but we can't talk about right now because they're not done. Um, something on a personal level that I'm doing is something also that the band is doing. So things are really looking great and moving forward and it's just nice. All right, so this is more, not so much a question, but um, hi, Gina and Kate. Gina, you have been an inspiration to me for 40 years. I hope you realize the huge impact you have made to a generation of girls, women who saw you out there making it happen, realize they could do it. I play drums because of you. Love you both. Thank you, Kelly. Wow. Well, that's, um, uh, I, you know, those, those, that's the sort of thing I live for. Because when someone tells me that they picked up the their instrument, no matter what it be, whether it's drums or guitar, whatever, because of me, I, that I was some sort of an inspiration to them that I don't, there's nothing better than that. Right. Kate, wouldn't you feel that way? Somebody yeah. says, you know, I, I watched you sing. I mean, I, 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 it made me want to immediately made me want to sing. I mean, it that's the biggest payoff, I think, in terms of just having been in the band, it's hearing people say how much the band meant to, to them, getting to them through hard times or getting them through. And we've heard yeah. that over and over and that was not, something I even dreamed that was going to have this impact on people, you know, that they uh -huh. found them through hard times or it made them happy and people can come and let loose and have fun, which seems like gold to me now, you know, if someone just said, Oh, your band's just fun. We just have fun. It's like, doesn't mean anything. It's just fun. Well, that's the most precious thing you could give <laughs> someone is to give them a good time, you know, to come out and be able to unleash their kind of rock and roll passion and just, uh, 
you know, hey, having, a, having a good time's not that easy, Kate. Having a good time's not that easy these days. No. And people get into sort of an ecstatic state when they see a band. It's different from any other kind of experience. A live band, you know, when you're dancing and sweating and watching and this music is pulsing and it's like, it's just an experience that's, I think, sort of, you know, it's, it's a universal something that all people love to have that experience. And it's, it's the, kind of it's rare. The universal elixir of love. Yes, baby. Music. <laughs> Music is the universal elixir of love. Let me drink it down. <laughs> Every um, day. Let me see. Oh, here's this. Okay. Gina, any advice for new and older drummers? What's your favorite snare for playing live and recording? Oh, God, Kate. That's a technical question. What is my favorite snare for recording and for playing live? Well, there, there is one snare that I always use for recording. And I bought it in a pawn shop in Boston for a hundred bucks in 1980. And Wendell, would you give me that? Would you give me my drum, my WFL so I could show them? This drum, has been played on every Go-Go's album. This is the snare that I've used on every Go-Go's album. And it sounds magnificent. You can tune it with any which way you want it. And it sounds good. It's, uh, you know, it's all beat up kind of looking. And first thing I, I wanted to do was like get it painted. And they, they were like, oh, don't touch it. Don't touch any of it. Leave the show exactly as it is, or you'll mess with the sound. I, you know, I didn't know that. Um, but the snare looks kind of beat up. It's called a WFL and uh, it's mighty. It has an incredible sound and you can make it sound boxy, boomy, thin, any which way you want to go with it, you can do it. And it's from 1957, the Ooh. year I was born. The year I was born. That's why it's so special to me. Yeah. Wow. It's really cool. Special um, snare. Yeah, I so I I don't bring that on tour because it's way that yeah it's way too important. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm trying to think. Here it is. Woohoo! See that? See it says I think it might say it on there. Ludwig WFL. Yeah, uh, that's beautiful blue. Uh, oh, here it goes, babe. Beautiful blue snare. Wow! Can you see that part right there? The yeah. brass part. Yeah. It says WFL in there. Yeah. Whoa. That's it. It's a beautiful. That's awesome. Here. Yeah, right? And it still sounds incredible. Um, I wonder what is about, about it. What is what I don't makes know. it like? I don't know. I don't know. I had I had the edges of it uh, trued to make sure that they were all perfectly, you know, round and flat. And uh, wow. And then I was going to get the outside done. They said, do not touch it. You'll destroy the sound. So I have not. Yeah. And I've used it. I just used it. On, I just used it on Club Zero, Kate. Wow. Awesome. I love I've that. Used it I love from, it. Uh, from the first album to the last song we just recorded. It's been on every, it's been the snare on every song. And that then, of course, magic. you take, you take different drums out on tour with you. You know what I mean? Ones that yeah. are, I mean, ones that sound good, but like that's, you know. When you have something that sounds great in the studio, you know what I mean? You don't oh, want yeah. to bring that out on tour that it could, it could get lost or messed up. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no one brings, I guess, their, well, maybe some people bring their special guitar or their special microphone, but not a recording. You would never bring your recording microphone, that's for sure. A whole different mm -mm, thing. Mm -mm. But the snare, that's a, that's a beauty. Yeah, it's cool. Um, My Farfisa actually was in the um, part of that, that uh, show of musical instruments that was at the Metropolitan Museum and now it's at oh, God. the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So it's there. When you go there, you'll see it if you get to see the exhibit. Farfisa. I actually well, watched one of those in the uh, late 70s. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing with it, but it was really fun. The sound, the sound that came out of that yeah that instrument was so fucking cool it was great it's so cool it's a real nothing sounds like a farfisa nothing nothing you can't it's recreate great. it loved yeah. it it's a special sound and it's 
And if you look at the mechanism behind, well, we're nerding out on our instruments now, but you know, just like I had to tune, there's like, you had to tune every single, anyway, it was a very big chore to tune. It wasn't just one knob. You had to go back and oh. open the back and sort of use a screwdriver to tune it. So not easy, but it was- Yeah, pain in the ass, so pain in the ass. Pain in the ass, it was okay. So <laughs> my mom was raised, this is from Diane Carter. My mom was raised in the 1930s, Preston, Maryland, fun seeing my photo of you on page 201. Oh, I have some fun photos for Kate. Oh, wait a minute, just disappeared. Okay, wow. I have some fun photos for Kate for her book and doc too from Rock and Rio. Do you still take photos today, Gina? Well, if I want to see those photos, how can, how can I get those photos? And the question to you is, do you still take photos today? I just went out and bought a couple new Polaroids. I'm going to start taking Polaroids. Oh. I love Polaroids. I've decided I'm going to take Polaroids. Yes. That and and uh, and on my phone. Well, we'll they see. say the iPhone is just as good as a 35 millimeter. Yeah, now. I know, I know, I know. But I, you How know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards the uh, the uh, Polaroids. I loved. I always loved I like Polaroids. that format. Yeah, like the format. a little frame. It's kind of cool. Let's see, what other picture, what other questions? Uh, Gina, will there be signed copies of your book available? Sure. Yeah, I'll be there. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, there'll be some signed copies. Uh, who's your favorite drummer that you've met in person? Can you tell us this story? Well... <laughs> I guess I have a lot of favorite drummers, but the most important one to me was Charlie Watts that I actually got to meet in person. Wow. So, I mean, there's lots of great drummers around. Don't get me wrong. But, but Watts. Yeah. Uh, he, he was rock solid and uh, he played what the song required. He never tried to show off in his playing. He wasn't about, you know, uh, playing a million different uh, beats or licks, whatever you want to call it. He played what the song required. He played what elevated that song, a yeah. real musical, a real musical player, you know? And that is the way that I learned from, that I, I, what I learned from him is to play for the song. Yeah. Don't, I, you'll never see me do a drum solo because I don't give a shit about a drum solo. Right. What I care about is making that song the best it can be. What drum yeah. parts can I put in there that's going to make that song happen? It's going to elevate it. It's going to help get it completely. Awesome. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I feel. Um, and, I, and, I, and I approach, I, every time a song's brought in, I still approach it that way. How can I make this song better? Right. Can, you know, can these drum parts elevate it? If they can't, then uh, then you don't need drums. I don't know. No drum solos. Wow, we don't do any drum solos or really guitar solos either. Just well, you know, there's plenty of bands around to do different things like that. Kate. Yeah. I mean, I love a good drum solo, but you know, when you get this thing where someone jams out a, you know, like a jam band, and you got like ten minutes, you know, fifteen minutes of each instrument jamming around i don't know i'd rather have this song be concise <laughs> me too. do me it too. start get into it rock on finish it and you know don't prolong prolong it just to I bring all you can out more. of it as three I, minutes I, or four minutes yeah i want to hear a three minute song that knocks my head off i exactly. want it to make me get up and move or else have me laying down in tears yeah i want I want it to affect me, you know? Yeah, and sometimes uh, if, if you get too too many breaks, well, it's all, it depends on the band, I guess. So, you know, but I agree. It's just, you just put what you can into the song to make, it's all about making the song great. Because what yes. are the, what's the band without, you know, the music? <laughs> yep, yep. 
It's all about and, the, the grilly when it gets you know, and, into it. And each player, their input is what will make what makes the sound of that band. Yeah. And it's all so important, every little bit of it. Because without that one element, it wouldn't be the same band. Yeah. You know, it, you might miss something that's an absolute hook. It's not there because that person wasn't there to do it. I, I don't know. Yes. I think every little piece counts. Yeah, absolutely. I really do. Here's a good question. That's one I wanted to ask. It's from Tommy Costa. What, were there any picks that you had to convince the other girls to allow in the book? No. No. So you didn't have to debate. I mean, because we have we've done photo sessions where we'd have so many pictures and we'd only agree on one or something, you know, but now, of course, now that we look, look back at those younger pictures, um, I think we would probably not oppose too many, but did you have to get approval from the others? Um, or they just trusted you. Of course no, you I, nobody, anything. nobody, nobody said anything about, it. first of all, the girls had seen the majority of the pictures that I, I because okay, I've had them for uh, 40 years. Right. And I, you know, and everybody's been to my house and I would bring bags of them on tour and we'd sit on the tour bus and get hysterical looking at them. And yeah. So the girls were pretty familiar with, like I say, 99% of what was going to go in the book. That's good. So there was no surprises for them. Everybody, like, as a matter of fact, this week, everyone got their book and Belinda called me up yesterday and she said, Gina, I just want to tell you, you did a really great job at the book. I really, really hey. love it. I really, really love it. And I was like, oh God, Belinda, that makes me feel so good. She said, you know, you told, you told the story great. You know, she said, it's your language, yeah. it's your words. And you really told the truth about things. And the photos are so funny. She said, it made me laugh a lot. And then Kat yeah. called me up and said, Gina, you did a great job. You told the truth about things. And, it, and once again, in your language, every, anybody that knows you knows you wrote every word in there. And uh, uh, Charlotte just wrote me up and said, good book. That's sort of her style. And uh, there you have it. Um, it was good. Every, yeah. every, everybody, everybody liked it a whole lot. Um, and uh, I, I, I feel good that they acknowledge it as such you know yeah. that they acknowledge it as being a, uh something that needed to get done and um you know thank god that i did it because i you know yeah. have someone in the band do this rather than some outsider that's the it's, beauty of it i mean that yeah that you were able to do it inside from inside but you didn't but they gave you the uh, sort of mandate to go ahead go with it yeah and they shared those pictures with them before i don't think we really shared that many pictures I mean, we're always taking pictures, but I try to send them, you know, now that we have digital, everything you can just send and, and I would never post anything without approval, but, um, you know, I don't think we ever took out bags of photos and showed them to each other. Um, no, Jesus and I don't well. know, I think we'd have to have some, we definitely have to have someone sort of curate the pictures. Uh, yes, you, I don't need a, you need a curator because, uh, there's no way you'll be able to figure it all out. You just won't. Yeah. You, you can't be you can't be objective with your own stuff, Kate. Right. And what a lot of people don't realize is that if you didn't have those pictures that you took it, to put together a book, if you had to use other people's photos, professional photographers, you would certainly have to pay. Yeah, you sure. Um, so you wouldn't be able to afford to do a book. So just the fact that you had had those photos is just genius. It's just so great that had, you had that wherewithal in the beginning to just snap away. Well, you know, I, I really wasn't thinking that far ahead, but it all worked out really yeah. well. You know, it's all about karma, Kate. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess. Kate, I think it's all about karma. Well, That's you have that good intention, you know, you have a good intention. I didn't have a master plan, Kate. I just didn't. Yeah. I didn't have a master plan. I just knew that what was happening was a once in a lifetime thing. I felt like I needed to capture it on tape and, uh, and uh, on film rather. And, and I had a great camera and so why not? Yeah. And so I did it. 
and uh, you know like every photograph to me meant something because it's uh uh, because I was compelled to take it somehow. And so. Um, I don't know uh, if I got many pictures of the whole band, you know, it's just hard to get everyone together. It's oh like, yeah, that's rough. You just go with your have, babe. Yeah. And, 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 you know, uh, you know, you'll have someone out, you'll have someone that can be objective and help you pick. It's hard. Oh God, it's hard. Yeah. And there's so many photos. There's so many, uh, just everyone's got their own you know, but hopefully some of, their, some of them are just like yours, just show the essence of the band, you know, just show yes. the yeah. fun. That's what I love is it shows the fun you had. Like you said, the boredom backstage, but all that is fun, you know, just yeah. goofing around and, um, yeah. because you know. Because with bands like ours, I don't think we ever like stood still. We were always sort of moving around or doing something. We've yeah. always had a lot of energy, right? Oh you know, yeah! If we weren't yeah. talking, you you were working on your outfit to fix it up and make it better, sewing on a button, yeah. doing something. Like we were always that way as well. Like, oh well, what are we what, what are we going to do in this song? Let's work out this. We never just yeah. ever sat around. No, That's we never just work, lounged you know? around. Yeah, never did we do that. So uh, yeah, we had that in common as well. Um, well, we well, come a long way, Kate. It is seven o'clock. Are we supposed to be wrapping this up? Or are we gonna? Yeah, we could take one or two more questions if you feel like. Yeah, let me look here. There's so me... many. Why? What, you, what is it that you need? What, look, what, what is it that you need? Do we miss anything? Is there something important to say? If not, let's wrap it up. Uh, yeah, this... maybe just one more question then. Here's like, a good what? question. Um, will any of the photos be available as prints for purchase? Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, um, the photographs in the book this is another cool thing. I'm, I'm now an author and now I'm having my first um, photography exhibition. That is awesome. That is really awesome. I can't believe it. And it's happening in Los Angeles uh, on November 6th at Mr. Music Head. I think we're going to have around 30 uh, fine prints available. Uh, for purchase and I'll also be doing a book signing there as well and then I come to New York and uh no no, no I'm sorry then I go to then I go to San Francisco and I do another um uh photo exhibition at um St. Joe's uh St. Joe's Art Academy and that will be really fantastic uh I'm pretty excited about that um I never thought that would happen. And I think I, this is what I'm most excited about because this is the yeah. farthest reaching thing, the farthest reaching thing from anything I thought I could do. That is amazing. A gallery of right. my photographs. I never thought I could do that. Yeah. But I mean, there's some very cool stuff I look at and I go, oh yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get How it. How did you pick which ones to- uh... Oh, Jesus Christ, Kate. I needed help because- yeah, I needed help. You know, there's, you know what? Look, when you look at these photos, there's certain photos you can, you can sort of go real straight ones, and then you can get the ones that are like not real straight, sort of right. off to the left, and not really like the easy choices. They're the ones I go to. Like, like there's one in there. Uh, of course, the clown family. I think that should go. That all those yeah. I would want to buy in the. Uh, um, the one where um, where the girls are in that hot tub of Belinda's throne of a life raft, that, right. that's fucking killing. Okay, I'm sorry. That's killing. And um, what else? There's some really funny ones, really good. Um, I have to look at all of them, but uh, I think uh, St. Joseph's is going to run stuff that's a little more out there. I think LA is going to be straighter, you know, more rock and roll straight stuff. Huh? I love this one. It's Me just, too. It's very artistic, you know. It's just I, like a kid, it. even if it wasn't the Go Go's, it's just a really interesting photograph, you know. I think they stand on their own. That's what's so great. They kind of just I, stand up. You know what? I think so, Kate. I like that's those are the photographs I gravitate towards. But yeah. you know, the galleries they're going to pick what they believes their what they believe their clientele will want right. to see yeah. so i'm you know i'm letting them go um but i'm also 
let them know what I think. Right. So we'll get some stuff here and there and it, it, it'll all work out hopefully. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm oh, just God. really Kate. so happy for you and have fun at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. That's tomorrow, right? Uh, we get inducted on Saturday. Saturday, okay. Mm-hmm. But I'll talk to you, babe. All right. I'll talk to you because I want to get you, so I want to send you something. All right. Well, this has been fun. Kate, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I love you. And love I want to come visit. I want to I come visit your place. Yeah. Come, we got to get together in person. There's too much zooming. I know. <laughs> but it's well, good. We have New that. York. I'm coming to New York. When are you coming to New York? The we'll 14th or 15th of, of November. Oh, okay. Let's for let's like 10 days. Oh, let's talk. Let's get together. We'll talk. I All love right. you, darling. And love I love you too. To you, okay. Thanks everyone for right. chiming Thank in you. here for your questions. Thank you so much, Gina and Kate. That was such sure. a great hour. Yeah. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. Uh, don't forget to buy your copy of Gina's new book, Made yes. in Hollywood, in store or online at greenlightbookstore.com. Thank you, everybody. This has been so much fun. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Eat. Thanks, guys. <laughs>